my entertaining universe. So I'm gonna I'm going to give you a rundown of what I'm going to talk about in today's vlog. It may be a longer vlog because I'm gonna be you know doing some things. So here's here's the situation. I'm going to be um, telling you about a movie I just watched. It's kind of a a movie review. So I'm gonna. Uh, the, the movie's called Ghost in the Shell. It's, I'm going to tell you the actors and actresses that are in the film. I'm going to read the plot to you. Then I'm going to tell you what I thought of the movie and give it an overall grade for acting, visual effects, what, what I thought of the movie, things like that. Then after that, I'm going to show you a book I got in the mail yesterday, and I might be getting another book in the mail either today or Monday, most likely Monday, because it's in North, it was in North Las Vegas last yesterday, and, and then I'm going to tell you what I ordered yesterday that probably won't be here for a little bit of time and then when all of those things get here I'll do a whole video on on that so let's let's dive into what this is so the movie is Ghost in the Shell it's a two hour film action sci-fi Scarlett Johansson plays Matoko Kusano and uh, Major Mi I can't I think it's Major Mia Something like that. Mia, uh, Major Mio, or Mira something. I can't remember exactly what her name is, but let's get the other names in here. I don't know what second we look at. Okay, so here we go. Michael put Michael Pitt plays Hideo uh, Kuze. We got Pilau. Oh. Hang on. I stopped doing that. We got Palau Aspike, who plays Bito. We got Takeshi Kitayo, who plays Daisuke Arm Armaki. I'm probably going to butcher these names, so I apologize. We got Juliet Benchoy, Benchoy, who plays Dr. Ole. We got Ning. Chin Han, who plays Sugusa. We got Asuko Tanaka, Kuicha Yamadera, Akio Atsuka, Lazarus Rute, who plays Ishikawa, Yutaki Izumara, who plays Sayoto, Kiryo Momoi, who plays Hari. Danosui Samal, who plays Ladria. Peter Fernand Fernando, who plays Cutter. Ryo Fuku Fukushima, who plays Red Robed Geisha. Tawanda Menima, who plays Borma. Anna Mari Marinka, who plays Dr. Uh, Dolan. Daniel Henshaw, who plays Skinny Man. Mana Hero Davis, who plays Bearded Man. Michael Wincott. Chris Obi, who plays the Ambassador. Adwayo Adobe Adoba, who plays Leah. And then you got Kirio Yamamoto. Pete Teo, who plays Tony. Keith Silverstone. Tricky. Hannah Tasker Poland, Tanya Dury, Kurt Kishita, Andrew Stalen, Xavier Horan, Vinny Bennett, David Johnson Wood, Kaya Fung Reich, Shinji Aikifuji, Alan Henry, Joseph Nafahu, Mateus Ufatu, Rebecca Reedy, Scott White, Ike, 
Amandi, Elise, Gabriel, Gabriel, Jessica Ree, Julian Boucher, Kirk Bailey, Han Chen, and Guyana Zager. That's the cast. Let's do. Let's go here to overview. Let's do the plot. Let's, uh, I'm trying to find the plot. Where's this? Hang on a second here. Okay, there's, uh, here we go. Give me a second here. Plot. There we go. In the near future, humans are augmented by cybernetic improvements to traits such as vision, strength, and touches. Augmentation developer Hanaka Robotics establishes a secret project to develop an artificial body or shell that can in integrate a human brain rather than an I AI. Mary Killian, that's who it was, Major M Mary Killian, the whole sole survivor of a cyber terrorist attack which killed her parents, is chosen as a test subject after her body is damaged beyond repair. Over the objections of her designer, Dr. Wei, Hanaka Robotics CEO Cutter decides to kill to use Killian as a counterterrorism oct operator. A year later, operative. A year later, Killian has attained the rank of major in the counterterrorism bureau section nine. During working alongside operatives Bato and Tagusa, under Chief Daik Daisuke Armaki, Killian who experiences hallucinations that Uwe dismisses as glitches, is troubled by how little she remembers of her past. The team throws a terrorist attack on a Hanke business, Hanka business conference, and Killian destroys the robotic geisha during, after it murders the host, hostage. After learning that the geisha has hacked by an unknown entity known as Kuze, Killian breaks code protocol and dives into its AI for answers. The entity attempts to a counterattack and Batao is forced to disconnect her. They trace the hacker to a Yakuza, Yakuza nightclub where they are lured into a trap. The explosion destroys Bauto's eyes and damages Killian's body. Cutter is enraged by Killian's actions and threatens to have Section 9 shut down unless Aramaki keeps her in line. Kuze tracks down Section 9's Honka consultant Dr. Dolan and kills her. The team links her merge to the deaths of other senior company researchers and uses and realizes that Uwe is the next target. Kuze takes control of two sanitation workers and sends them to kill Uwe. Now with cybernetic eyes, B Bateau kills one while the rem repaired Killian enough to do the other. While they interrogate the worker, Kuze speaks through him before compelling him to commit suicide. Tagusa traces the hack to a secret location where the team discovers a large number of humans mentally linked as a makeshift signal network. Killian is captured and Kuze reveals that he is a failed Honke test subject from the same project that created Killian. He urges her to question her own memories and stop taking their medication, or her medication, as it actually helps to block her memories. Kuze then frees her and escapes. Killian confronts Uwe, who admits that 98 test subjects died before Killian, and that her memories are implanted. Cutter was decided... Cutter has decided that Killian is a liability and orders Uwe to kill her after she returns to Honke uh, Robotics. Instead, Uwe gives Killian an address and helps her escape. Cutter kills Uwe but blames Killian, saying that she has gone rogue. He informs Aramaki and the team that Killian must be terminated. 
Killian show, follows the address to an apartment occupied by a widowed mother who reveals that her daughter, Mentoko Kunasagi, ran away from her home a year ago and was arrested. While in custody, Mentoku took her own life. Killian leaves and and contacts Aramaki, who allows Cutter to remotely eavesdrop on their conversation. But Tao, Tasuga, and Aramaki eliminate Cutter's men trying to ambush them while Killian follows her memories to the hideaway where Matoku was last seen. There she and Kuze meet and recall their past lives as anti augmentation radicals who were abducted by Honkai as test subjects. Cutter deploys a spider tank to kill them. Kuze nearly kills dies before Killian is able to tear out the tank's motor control center, losing an arm in the process. Mortally wounded, Kuze asks Killian to come with me. There is no place for us here. Killian refuses, saying no, and I'm ready to leave. I belong here. Kuze says he will always be with her, and the ghost then fades out. Then a Honke sniper, sniper kills him. Batao and the team rescue Killian while... Aramaki executes Cutter with Killian's consent. The next day, now repairing and embracing her new true, her true identity as Japanese Toko Motoko, Killian reacts, reconnects with her mother and returns to work with Section 9. Now, I think that that was a long process, a lot of plot to process there. So I'm going to, I'm going to say Overall, for I'm gonna I'm gonna do it on a rating scale for acting and actresses and all that stuff. I'm gonna give it for for all of the Japanese or the Chinese or whatever it is. The acting for the 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 people that got to act for the that I'd give like a seven and a half to an eight. On that scale, with them act with them with Scarlett Johansson's character, I give it more four and a half out of five, or four and a half between four and a half and five out of ten. Now for visual effects and sound and sound and all of the and the artists and the, all that stuff, I'd probably give it and and the geisha and all that stuff. I'd probably and the robotics and all that stuff. I'd give it. An 8.5 to a 9 out of 10. Now, the overall grade I give the whole entire film, I'd say probably be like maybe a B minus, C plus, and all in all when it's all said and done. So that's what I, you know, and I'm not saying that it was a bad film. I'm just saying I wouldn't have maybe casted Scarlett Johansson as as an Asian descent person in this film. But that's just my personal take. You don't have to believe a word I say. You can form your own opinion on on this movie if you ever decide to go watch Ghost in the Shell on wherever you want to watch it, whether it be on, on iTunes, HBO, wherever you can find it. And, and it doesn't have to be in any of those locations either. It could be on YouTube. It could be any, anywhere. So with that being said, I'm going to move on to this next thing, which is the book that I got in the mail yesterday. It's a brand new book that, that I think would be, that I would be, I'm very interested in reading, which I may read at some point. It's called... It's called The Ballads of, of Songbirds and Snakes. It's, the book is about... Um, it is the morning of the reaping that will kick off the 10th annual Hunger Game in the capital. 18-year-old Cortlanius Snow is preparing for his one shot at glory as a mentor in the games. The once mighty house of snow has fallen on hard times. It's fate hanging on the slender chance of Cort... Coriolanus will be able to out charm, outwit, and outmaneuver his fellow students to mentor the winning tribute. The odds are against him. It's been given the humiliating 
assignment of mentoring the female tribute from District 12, the, the lowest of the low. Their rates, their fates are now completely intertwined. Every choice Cornelius Corolanius makes could lead to a fit, favor or failure, triumph or ruin inside the arena. It will lead to a fight to the death outside the arena. Coriolanus starts to feel that his doomed tribute and must weigh his need to follow the rules against his desire to survive no matter what it takes. So, it's it's an it's interesting and that's one of the books that or one of the things that I ordered that's arrived. The other thing that I ordered was back in December or early January, early the earliest month, which was, um, which was a Meredith Foster book. It's a workbook of sorts. Like I said earlier, that that's that was in North Las Vegas yesterday. Who knows when I'll get it? Either it may either be today, Monday, or Tuesday of next week. So there's that. There's three movies I ordered yesterday, which are Lucy, which. Stars Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Thirteen, which stars Evan Rachel Wood, and Relentless, which stars. I'm trying to think of who was in that movie. Someone that I like. That was it Michelle T Trettenberg. No, that wasn't what. Who was? Who it was? I can't remember who it was in that one. And then another book that I ordered is uh, Ready Player Two by Ernest Cline, which I'm really looking forward to reading that one because I've read Ready Player One, the first one, and who knows if it's going to be, you know, the same characters or it's going to be different characters. So that's, that's everything for today's vlog. Hang on one second. I have some birthdays I have to wish. I should have picked this up and brought it over here when I brought the book. But here, so we've got... Uh, Phil, Phil Lester's, uh, 34th birthday today, and Daystorm Power's 39th, and then we've got, uh, Kate Bach's 28th birthday today, so, happy birthday to those three individuals, and you should all keep it real, and I will see you with a brand spanking new vlog tomorrow, and just be your best version of yourself that you could possibly be, y'all know the drill. And I will see you tomorrow with the brand spanking new vlog. And ciao.